Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. In this episode 185, I think, I'm a little behind on keeping up with some stuff, so I apologize. I had the day off, but I wasn't really feeling well this morning, so I pretty much slept all day today. And now I'm wide awake, and uh, it's late, obviously, so I'm trying to knock these out real quick for you guys. Uh, the thing I want to talk about today, though, is we're going to go back to 2004, and we're going to talk about a comic book series called Venom vs. Carnage, which was a miniseries written by uh, Peter Milligan, and it was drawn by Clayton Crane. And it was one of my first exposures to Clayton Crane and his artwork, and which I love. And it only got better throughout time. And we will talk about other stories coming up, like Carnage USA and Carnage Family Feud, that he was also the artist on and those books were amazing. Uh, but uh, so he just got like better and better and better. But this was kind of his early start, at least for me and my exposure to him. Uh, but I think he had done some other stuff before this, but this really put him on the map. And I can honestly say his art is my favorite thing about this book. Uh, the, the writing though, on the other hand, I am not a big fan. So I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're out there and you're a big fan of this miniseries, you're probably not gonna like my breakdown uh, of this because uh, <laughs> I really don't have much to say. I don't think this is a very deep story and I don't actually think it's very well written or well paced at all, like not even in the slightest. And you know me, I hate to be negative about things because I know how much hard work it goes into making comics and uh, telling these stories and doing it on a consistent basis. Uh, but for me, you know, if I don't like something, it doesn't gel with me, I gotta be honest about it. So without further ado, let's dive in to Venom vs. Carnage. But before we get started, I actually have a gift for you guys, but this is from one of our other viewers. So Venom Panhead Gaming, uh, who comments on this channel sometimes, he actually hit me up on uh, on Instagram and sent me some digital codes to give away to you guys. So for the next couple Venom Vlog episodes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two codes right there on screen. So boom. The first one is Venom number one, which is the recent release, I believe, by Donnie Cates, and then Venomized number one from the miniseries. So I'll put those right there if you're out there and you want to put in those codes, you know, first person to get them gets those comics and uh, if you want to just do one and save one for someone else that's cool too obviously i can't stop you if you are greedy if you want if you want them both but they're there if you want them and uh, over the next couple episodes i'll have uh, you know two more in each one until i do all six total so we got four more codes to give away from our friend uh, venom panhead gaming so i'm going to put a link to his channel down below make sure you check it out and definitely support that guy and thank him personally for these codes all right, let's sink our teeth into Venom vs. Carnage. Uh, this miniseries, when it first came out, it was in 2004, and it was right around the time that the Daniel Way you know, series, the 18-issue series that we talked about about two weeks ago on this channel, where we did them all, like all four parts in one week, right around the time that was ending is when Venom vs. Carnage came out. And they brought on a new writer, Peter Milligan, and it was just like a four-issue miniseries drawn by Clayton Crane. And Clayton Crane, like I said, kills it in this book. His artwork is amazing, It's uh, and it only gets better as time progresses when he jumps on Carnage USA and when he jumps on Carnage Family Feud. Like, his stuff just gets better and better. But here is kind of where I first was exposed to him, and I really loved his style. And to me, he sells this book. Like if you're out there and you've never read this, I'd buy it just for his artwork. And I would buy this story again. I own it in print but I and digital, but I would own like the single issues because I have the trade paperback, but I would go out and buy the single issues again just to, you know, have more versions of his artwork because I like it that much. Like his, his art sells this book because the writing does not. Uh, in my opinion, this this writing by Peter Milligan is just awful. And like I said, you guys know I don't like to be so hardcore on, on writers and, and, and be so mean uh, because I know firsthand how hard it is to do their job. Uh, but in this one, it just, I cannot even slightly defend the writing in this book. And again, this is just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below because I know a lot of people probably came into Venom and Carnage around this time and they have good memories of this miniseries. But me, I did not like it at the time it came out and I like it even less now, uh, you know, rereading it. And I just, I, every piece of dialogue comes across as a bio. It's like, all right, I'm gonna list characteristics of a character. And then I'm just, and it's like, all right, so Eddie Brock is, you know, six one or whatever. Has the, he weighs this much and he eats this kind of food and blah blah. And then it feels like that's what's being said in a lot of the dialogue and scenes that are supposed to be really emotional or you know or be anger driven or be like emotionally driven like when uh, uh, Patrick uh, Mulligan who is you know with his wife and he's having these moments with her you want things like that to like resonate and you want to care about these characters but everyone just speaks in bios and uh, and they just openly say things about each other's past 
just as exposition just to get information to people without it coming across like in a natural organic or even interesting way uh, and it just it's just like everyone's wearing neon signs about how they feel at all times and that you know with these neon signs also lists all their background uh, as well and it's so it's just boring writing to me uh, and and it starts off, I mean, case in point, there's this great action scene at the beginning where Venom and Carnage are just going at it. They're fighting each other and you're locked in. You're two pages in and they're just fighting. They fight, you know, they're swinging through the city. They fall into this building. There's a fire. They're fighting in fire. And you're like, oh, this is great. You know, but what are they saying? Is it Eddie Brock going, you know what, you know, Cletus, I've come back to New York, New York for one last time. I'm going to wipe you out. I'm going to take you out of the picture. You know, I hate your guts. You know, you've done, you, you've caused me nothing but pain and uh, you're exactly what's wrong with our race and I need to get rid of you. Is he saying any, anything like that, you know, to further the story of those characters? Not really. He's, what he's saying is to set up this one story and then what will become a miniseries later on called Toxin, which is Eddie Brock's going, no, you know, Cletus, get back here. We need to talk. Uh, you're about to have a baby. And Cletus is like, I don't want to have a baby. I don't want to talk about this. And, you know, Eddie Brock's like, well, we have to because in our race, in our lineage, every 1,000th symbiote, so, if, you know, like the from the first symbiote of their bloodline, when number 1000 is born, it's born to potentially be crazy or, or, or different than all the others or whatever. And I'm like, uh, what? Like, and that's literally the dialogue that's being said. I'm like, this is never mentioned before. This was never brought up before. Uh, also, have you met Carnage? Wouldn't he be the 1000th, uh, 1000th, uh, symbiote born in this bloodline? Like he's the crazy one. He even bonded with a psychopath and became even crazier. So wouldn't he be the anomaly? Why is his child the anomaly? Uh, to me, I'm just like, wh why force that backstory in? And that's and that's all they do. They did talk for like five pages about how we can't let the one thousandth uh, you know child be born. And I'm sorry, I'm having trouble saying that word right now. <laughs> Lisping is driving me nuts trying to say that. But uh, but yeah, like why are they making such a big deal out of this? And why did Peter Milligan decide to add this to the continuity? To me, it was just ridiculous. It's like, you know, baby 1000 is going to be the one who is different than all the others. And why is that a thing? And who cares? And who keeps track? And, you know, well, how come when, you know, Carnage wasn't born, how come Venom wasn't like, oh, man, well, I can't let this thing live because it's 999. And if it gives birth, it's going to, you know, do something. And plus, not only that, but like Venom also gave birth to like five other symbiotes and lethal protector. Um, so it's like, okay, so was Carnage like 994 and then the other five were 995 to, you know, 999 or whatever. It's like, it, it's, it, it's so stupid. This whole thing is so stupid uh, to me. And, uh, and I was just like, why do you need to explain any of this? Why don't you just say Carnage is having a baby and you're worried about it? What, what do you, what does it matter about the 1000 baby or anything like that? It's, it, it's irrelevant really, uh, because the, really the, the crux of the story, when you focus on a story is Carnage is going to have a baby and is it going to be good? Is it going to be like Carnage? Is it going to be like Venom? You know, what's, what's the thing? And then we, as we find out through the comics at this point anyway, it's not even fully about just the symbol it's always about who it bonds to as well so i don't know i'm, I'm a little bit lost with the the thought process beside uh, but you know behind peter milligan's choice and i think it's because peter milligan was so you know focused on naming a character pretty much after himself that he didn't really care about much of the other story he was focused on uh, patrick mulligan who may or may not be in the venom movie coming up because we see his like name in the credits as rumored for reed scott might play patrick mulligan who i think is an interesting enough character on his own like if you strip away all the bs that's in the story he's a cop he has a wife she's about to have a baby they do have the baby in the story spider-man saves the wife at the end of the first issue as you know uh, patrick mulligan gets caught up in this battle with carnage and venom and then also black cat gets involved so it's mainly like black cat and spider-man versus carnage and venom but then carnage and venom are kind of fighting and then patrick mulligan uh, ends up getting the symbiote that carnage is you know gives birth to so he carnage gives birth he tries to bury the symbiote underground tries to kill it he wants to kill it he wants to suffocate it he doesn't want it to you know uh be alive for whatever reason and uh, and it ends up bonding with patrick mulligan like i said peter milligan created a character named patrick mulligan i mean it's so ridiculous to me and 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 so he's just like i'm gonna make a character that is essentially named after me um and uh, same initials and everything and you're just like ah like as soon as i read that i'm like really that's the character's name isn't that the writer's name and then i went back i go oh he's peter milligan not patrick mulligan oh i see what he did there um and it, it just it was like uh it, it was weird. It's like, it's such a, that's such a weird ego thing to do that. Uh, unless he wasn't even thinking about it. Maybe some editor mentioned the name Patrick Mulligan, but wouldn't he as the writer go, well, that kind of sounds close to my name. 
can we come up with something different? Like, why does he have to be like an Irish cop? Cletus Cassidy is already, an, like, already fits the Irish, you know, guy uh, thing. So why do we need Patrick Mulligan, you know, and whatever. But he's a cop. He, he's part of NYPD. And uh, he's ultimately a good guy. He kind of has some annoying habits of, like, you know, you know, correcting people, you know, when they speak or, or you know, or trying to be too by the book. And Black Cat kind of finds that annoying uh, because she's trying to steal something. And then she sees him in danger and she goes and saves him. And then he ends up, you know, leaning on her through the whole story trying to get answers about the symbiote until Spider-Man gets more involved and then he starts looking up to Spider-Man and now that he has the symbiote he spends most of, the, most of the story you know trying to take after Spider-Man's example and so because of this because Carnage tried to kill him and that didn't work Venom tried to kill him and that didn't work uh, Venom and Carnage just randomly are like hey let's team up almost like as random as Sandman and Venom did in the Spider-Man 3 movie where you know Carnage is just swinging along and then Venom's like hey you want to team up to kill your son and Carnage is like yeah and it's like okay that's what we're gonna do so after they team up you know there's a big battle leads to like a graveyard and uh patrick mulligan is looking for like these bodies and you know and he comes across the carnage and venom and they t team up and they try to take him down and they're almost about to kill him but black cat comes in and intervenes and says like hey aren't you his grandfather aren't you his father why don't you if you're so worried about what kind of symbiote he'll be now that he has a human host why don't you two try to actually raise him and then venom's like uh no <laughs> and then carnage goes yeah hello i'm a psychopath killer and again this is like these guys are just reading their bios to black cat they're not even like you know like coming up with a, a organic or or interesting reason to want to do what they want to do they're just reading their bios like cletus cassidy looks at her and goes uh yeah hi i'm cletus cassidy i i'm a mass murderer uh why would i want to raise a child and you're just like really that's your answer like that's peter milligan's like big you know dialogue uh explanation for why these guys, characters want to do stuff is because it's in their bio to do it uh because you know uh history just keeps repeating itself so they're just saying what their history is um it's just to me it just doesn't work on a story level this story doesn't work it could have it had all the elements i like the idea of a cop being a new you know symbiote being you know you know Carnage's son he goes by the name Toxin um, and uh, I, I thought that was neat and I liked that he had a family at home and he ultimately at the end of the story after he beats up Carnage and Venom which all he does is like hit him a couple times and they run away together and and that's how the story ends it's so anticlimactic there's really don't feel like there's any stakes involved uh, with this storyline uh, you don't get a sense of anything really like for me i just like the artwork it's just a pretty book throughout the whole thing and i like seeing black cat like try to step up and be you know more of a character in this even though she's kind of written a little blandly at times um by peter milligan at least she you knows she's very active in the storyline and it was cool to see that because she has as much of a past with symbiotes as you know like any other side character that Spider-Man has been around. So it was neat to see her wedged into this story. I thought that worked really well. Um, and there are elements that, that do work on a, you know, on a, from a distance, but in the hands of Peter Milligan, I thought they were handled all poorly. And it led to, to me, one of the most mediocre Venom stories ever written. I mean, this is probably in my bottom five of um, least favorite Venom and Carnage stories uh, by far. Um, I don't know where in the bottom five, but, you know, but it's definitely down there with like Spider-Man, the next chapter with the stuff they did with Venom there. Um, I thought that was uninteresting. And I think this is very uninteresting. And it led into a miniseries, though, that actually was pretty decent. Uh, Toxin got his own miniseries after this, which we will definitely talk about down the road. And I think Peter Milligan also wrote that. And I think Clayton Crane drew it, uh, but I, or maybe it was, uh, Derek Robertson, I think, drew it, uh, who is a great artist. I love his Wolverine run that he did with Greg Rucka. So um, it is, does fall into capable hands later, too. Uh, and I think Peter Milligan kind of finds his voice with the character. And once you strip Toxin away from, you know, a bad, you know, writing with Carnage and Venom, once you strip those characters away and just focus on a Toxin story, I think he found his footing with the character. So I think when a lot of people remember that they like Toxin and the character in general, they're probably thinking more of the miniseries. At least that's my take on it. You may disagree, and you may have actually liked Toxin in this, but to me, he just didn't work on any level um, from a story standpoint, except for the beats. I'm like, all right, it makes it's cool that he's a cop, he has a family, he has a baby, and he's thinking about them, and then at the end, he makes a sacrifice because he's turning into a monster, and I guess he had like a severed finger in his pocket, and when he bent over to see his son, the finger fell out and the son, like the baby grabbed it and started sucking on it. And he's like, oh my God, I'm a horrible person. I brought that finger in this house, you know, and whatever, I gotta leave. I'm just gonna keep bringing horrible things to my wife and kid, uh, you know, metaphorically, even though he's speaking literally. Um, 
I'm just going to keep ruining their lives if I continue to be this creature living in this house. So he, you know, packs his things up and he leaves at the end of the story. And that's kind of the setup for the Toxin character, which I said, like, we'll talk about that in an episode later on. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I was kind of dreading this episode. That's why I put it off a little bit, because I read this book um, two weeks ago, and I was going to do the episode then, but then I was like, oh, I might do it with someone else and have like a guest on it. But then kind of plans fell apart with that, unfortunately. And then I kept putting it off and being like, oh, maybe I can hang on to it and still have that guest on, because at least maybe they'll add a, a counter position to my thoughts on this. So it's not just a negative review, you know, the whole time. Um, but again, I, you know, think, you know, schedules and everything, you know, that don't always line up. So I was like, fine, I'll just just read it again so last night I read it again and was like all right here we go I'll do the episode today and I really didn't want to do this because I was I knew I was going to be very negative and you guys know me uh it's not that I don't like being honest about things or if it's something is neg if I don't like it it's not like I'm not going to be honest and tell you that I don't like it um but it's just again I always try to factor in how much hard work goes into these stories but sometimes I don't think people actually work as hard as they could and that's where I feel with Venom and Carnage I feel like the artist worked as you know as hard as he could and the writer didn't and uh and at least that's how it comes across to me but you guys let me know what you think down below of venom versus carnage and if you had a favorite moment in this or if you have a counter you know argument to something i said that i didn't like but you liked or you saw different a different meaning in a scene uh let me know down below i mean ultimately the the scenes and the thing like certain things in this could work i think but the dialogue just ruined it for me i mean that's to me how bad the dialogue was is every time i felt like i was going to get into the story the dialogue would pull me right back out. And I was just like, Ugh, you know, like, why, why is he intent on writing it this way? But uh, clearly he was probably just trying to find his voice with these characters. And unfortunately for me, I didn't enjoy him trying to find his footing. But when he does find his footing, I think he does, Peter Milligan does a better job in the Toxin miniseries. So uh, to be fair to him, I will definitely review that and, you know, balance out the negativity here with probably more positivity there. Uh, so that's it for this episode. I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. And and uh, like I said, I'm going to just stick to one episode every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of Venom Vlog. As you've seen, I've been putting up video game episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays of this past week. So I'm trying to stick to that new schedule. And then also we've been weaving in the Till, uh, till All or One, which is the new like Transformer uh, focus thing that I'm going to be doing from here on out. And you will probably see a few episodes uh, more than you know one a week for now, just to uh, until we get more Venom stuff. I can I'll have I'll use that spare time to record a few more Transformer stuff and post those. Uh, but as we get closer to Comic-Con, I have a feeling we're not only going to get more Venom news, but probably more Bumblebee news. So, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have my uh, work cut out for me coming up pretty soon. And as I'm trying to finish this novel, that's my goal is to get rid of this novel, finish that up, and then have more time so I can, you know, do more Transformer content on here. And then also, uh, for those, I know I don't have any Patreon backers yet, which is totally cool. I'm still building that page. I posted it up. It's there if you want to go check it out. But the first video... Um, I just finished editing and I'm going to put the first two episodes up on Sunday since I missed this past Sunday. So if I ever, um, you know, I know not off to a good start, unfortunately, on Patreon as far as like me uploading content. Uh, so I will get it on Sunday. If you're waiting for the first episode, there will be two episodes that will go up on uh, Sunday of this week. So thank you guys again for the support on every level. And honestly, give me some feedback on the Patreon. If you go and check out the page, links down below. If you think it's too early for me to have one, let me know because I'm starting to think it is, and I'm and I'm kind of not, you know I'm kind of not feeling it. I was, I you know I'm hoping my channel here gets monetized again. That's really what I want to happen, and uh, and you guys watch enough content on here to that I already feel like I'm being supported, and I don't know if Patreon is really something for me right at this time. I think it's a little too early. And, uh, and I think I need to come up with different content for it. Uh, so if you guys agree to that, please be honest with me. Let me know down in the comments below. And we can, you know, postpone the Patreon, do it another time, or never do it. I can just put a link down below to like a, a Streamlabs account where you can donate like a dollar or two there anytime you feel like it. Um, if that's something you want to do, we can do that as well. So you guys let me know in those comments. Thanks so much for watching my channel. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.